Alright, here we go. Let's try it again.
And he said, I mean, I'm glad. And then he realized that that was doing a, a worse transfer. And finally he said, well, I'm surprised. And then he just decided, you know what? He said, you know, I'm just going to leave. Because these three answers that I try to give this man, you know, to comfort him just weren't correct. Tonight I want to get you thinking about the great hope of salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. That one day we, as believers in Christ, are going to be united with Jesus. That one day all of you here that have made a commitment to live according to God's purpose will have the opportunity to meet up with our Savior. And all of those young people and those that haven't made that commitment, I'm not going to shove the message down, excuse my expression, down your throat. I'm not going to do that. Because you know what? When we make a commitment to believe, to follow Christ, it has to be something that has to be willing from our heart. We have to open our heart to God, and He will lead us into this new lifestyle, into making changes into our life. And the best way that we can do that as mature believers is by the way that we live our lives. One of the things that I started thinking about is as, as believers in Christ, we are going to take the journey someday to God's home. I don't know if you ever, if you ever thought to, to, to uh, think about this. One day you're going to be making a journey, taking a journey to meet with God in His home. I think many times when you're young, you think, when I was younger, I used to think, wow, you know what, I'm invincible, nothing's going to beat me, nothing can hurt me. I used to pick fights with bigger guys than me, you know, I used to get beat up sometimes, sometimes I used to win, but it was, it was weird the way I was. Now that I think back, I was like, it was crazy, I don't know what I was on. And, and, and I realized that the path that many young people have taken, or the focus, the way that they see life, just doesn't make sense. And it's very sad to observe that some of these young people are in our churches. Some of these young people were born in church. Some of these young people have parents that serve in the church. And I'm not going to say it's the parents' fault always. No, it's not. But you know what? We have to address the important issues of being Christian, of being a follower of Christ, of what we believe in, and why do, why do we as mature Christians strive so much to follow Jesus? Why do we strive so much to be obedient? Why do we strive so much to be different than everybody else? Is it pointless? Or is there something that we are striving for? Is there something that Jesus has promised us? Is there something that keeps us going when times get tough? Is it something that keeps you going even though when you know what? You get frustrated. Don't you guys get frustrated sometimes? Don't tell me no. Because I get frustrated sometimes. I get frustrated at the things that I do many times. When I say I'm not going to do it, and next thing you know, I'm doing it. When I say I want to be different, and that different that I want to be just becomes so hard for me to change the issues or the things in my life. I don't know if how many of you like to take trips. Raise your hand if you like to take trips. I think it's wrong. Once in a while, okay. Brother Don Alberto is being uh, very generous, saying, I think he, he goes all the time. Uh, if you want to know where he goes all the time, you should speak to him later. You know what? There's a journey. We love taking trips. And there's a, there's a journey that we're going to take to God's home. One of the things that I realized is that judging by our preacher preparations that are taking place right now in our spiritual life, Sometimes it seems that we are not putting a lot of emphasis on being prepared for this journey. And I was asking you, who likes to go on trips? I love going. I love going to the beach. And my family and I, and, and my, my mother-in-law and, and her siblings, we take a yearly uh, family trip to the beach, and we go for a week. And it's this awesome time that we have. And, and they rent a house, and we sleep there, and we go to the beach every day, and we go eat ice cream. But you know what? Before all this, we know that we have to pack these senses. <coughs> like shorts, because I love swimming. Uh, sandals, because I want to get sand in my, my good shoes. 
uh, t-shirts because I'm going to sweat a lot. I don't have to change my clothes all the time. I have to take, uh, my kids love taking, uh, no, video games not allowed. I can't take it at least, you know. Sunglasses, a sunblock, um, food, food, I mean, I take, I, I take my grill because I love grilling out of the deck. So, so many things that we have to prepare in order to, to go. I think that it, I could just, you know, I could just be one day, you know what, we're going to go to the beach in June, but I'm, you know, the, the trip is set, I'm not going to prepare anything, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to get in my car, get my kids, and we're going to drive out. And I'm sure we will get there, we will go into the house, but you know what, none of the supplies are going to be there. Nothing's going to be there, because what, because we didn't take the time to prepare. Now, one of the things that I want to share with you is that somebody asked a, a kid, a, a young kid's class, this question. What are the things that we can take to heaven? Now, Nicole at eight years says she's going to pack her toothbrush and toothpaste because she wants to have the brightest smile in heaven. <laughs> she will also bring her blanket and stuffed animals. Now, Natalie, who's nice, said we won't need our toothbrushes. We won't need that disappointments in heaven. You can take your spirit and you will leave your old body. You will get a new body in heaven. Other items the kids said they were going to take were in their, in their uh, suitcases, they said, or pizza, football, dogs, cats and babies, if you're a cat lover, I'm sorry, snowboards, beanie babies, money, violin, a glass angel, flowers, a dove, PlayStation, Xbox 360, <laughs> and somebody said, a mom and a dad. <laughs> now, Emily Straw says to leave all the stuff behind. We can't take anything to heaven. Because we don't need anything besides what's there already, and that's God. We don't need CDs or TVs or anything else that we have here. Now I want to share a letter that a grandmother wrote to her grandchildren after receiving the bad news that she had cancer and she was soon to depart from this world. I'm going to ask my wife to read it. I'm going to ask you to please uh, pay close attention. Close your eyes if, you, if this helps you. But listen to these words. I am in my car driving home from the doctors and trying to digest the news I received over a routine biopsy on what the ENT thought was an infected gland. I had gone in because I thought I had a sinus infection, but he diagnosed me too as having acid reflux. Infected sinuses I had experienced several times over the years, and although acid reflux was something new, I could deal with it. I might have to make some changes in my eating habits, but I certainly could handle that. I have never been on one of those that live to eat, I am more an eat to live kind of person. To say I was shocked at the news I had just received is putting it mildly. It seems the biopsy was labeled with that dreaded word, malignant. Stunned, surprised, and even shaken are way too mediocre to express the feelings I have. Perhaps unbelief can best sum up the mixture of emotions that surge through my body. All of a sudden, like instantly, I was jolted into facing the reality that my head had known for years, but had never been embraced by my heart. We are mortal and we are going to die. When I was young, I thought of death as something for old people. And now that I am old, it still seemed like it was always out there in the future for someone. It was at that point that I remembered a verse I had memorized only a few days earlier. It jumped off the page at me as though God was speaking to me. This is the attitude I want from you. He said to me through Luke 138. The verse was originally Mary's response to the angel, and I had often admired her reply. She said, I am God's servant, and I am willing to accept whatever he wants. Never in a million years did I think this would be what he wanted from me and asked me to accept. Peace flooded my soul, though I acknowledged God and was willing to submit to his will. I knew in my heart it was time to get ready to go. Granddad and I have traveled a lot in our 58 years of married life together. 
I have loved each and every trip because basically I am a goer. Part of the fun of each trip was the anticipation and preparation. I loved to plan just what to take and, of course, that always depended on where we were going, what we, were, what we would be doing, and whom we might be meeting or seeing. Getting ready for this trip, however, was a completely different nature. This trip was the trip of a lifetime and was the most important, most momentous trip I would ever make. I would be meeting the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the God of all creation. How do you pack for that? As I began to think about it, I realized I had one major problem. I couldn't take anything with me. No suitcase, no change of clothes, no makeup or jewelry. I was all that was going. I thought it was difficult when the airlines came up with their new rules that you were allowed only one checked bag and one carry-on. This was even more of a challenge. I would be allowed to carry with me only what was already packed in my spirit and soul. I could take with me any of the changes the Holy Spirit had made in my life, any of the changes that were of eternal value, and the verses I had committed to memory would certainly come along. Those were the very words of God. Then I thought of what God had said about himself. He said, I am the high and holy one that inhabits eternity. I live in that high and holy place with those whose spirits are contrite and humble. Isn't it interesting that God did not choose to live with the wise people, the rich people, or the super strong people? As great as God is, you would have thought he would have enjoyed their company more. On earth, we tend to gravitate to people who think like we do and have similar ideas. But then it occurred to me that maybe that this is the whole reason. Who could be more humble than God? In addition to everything else, God is that makes him so great. He is also humble. What could be more humbling than to take upon yourself the likeness of a mere human being, walk among us with all our limitations, and then die for us? That is why he dwells with the one who knows, the one who knows what they are, corrupt to the core, and who they are, a complex human created by him. Everything we have or are comes from God alone. 1 Corinthians 4, 7 states it plainly. What makes you better than anyone else? What do you have that God hasn't given you? And if all you have is from God, why boast as if you have accomplished something on your own? And 2 Corinthians 10, 17 adds, The person who wishes to boast should boast only of what the Lord has done. So, in reality, the only things worth packing or that are packable for me are the things God himself has done, the things he has done in me and through me. I can only hope there are a few of those there. I can't go back in time and relive the wasted moments that I sought things for myself and aspired to self-praise and glory, or erase all the times I was busy feathering my own nest. But I can relate this truth to you. You have a lifetime ahead of you. My parting words to you would be to change your focus today and set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Galatians 3, 2. For the things which are seen are temporal, and the things that are unseen are eternal. 2 Corinthians 4, 17, 18. This is not easy when you are young because everything seems to be screaming the opposite and appealing to your ego to make a name for yourself or to achieve so you can have more. I know because I have been there. But if anyone can do it, if anyone can live life with an eternal perspective, I am betting on the best 13 grandchildren God ever made. Remember, heaven is home. I'll be waiting for you and we'll see you when you get there. With all my love, Nani. that many times you forget about our mortality that one day this life will cease. But the hope that we have in Christ is that when this life sees a whole new one will start. And one of the things that we tend to never think about, especially when we're young, and as we get older, as we become adults, a lot of times we, we don't think about these things either, is the fact that the time that we have now, as many say, is just a practice time. 
It's a time to get ready for that journey that we're going to take. Now, when you get ready, you have to start packing and, and doing things to be able to have what is necessary. When you go and get to the, where you to the, to your destination. Now, there's an old story also that says that one time this man went to heaven, and there was two friends. And the first, the friend came in, and St. Peter saw him at the door, and he took him to his house, and he was among his house, beautiful, it had, you know, nice windows, big doors, it was humongous, it was more than what he needed. And then the other friend was also shown to his house, but his house was near the shack. And this man got so upset, he said, why did he get that big house when we lived in the same neighborhood, our kids went to the same school, we shopped at the same store, we bought clothes at the same place, we got almost the same cars, we did almost everything the same. Why does he get a big house and I get this little tiny shack? Not even on earth would I have lived in a place like this. And St. Peter told him, well, you know what? We built this house with everything that he sent ahead. This is all we could build with the things you sent. Paul said that we are builders building on a foundation that is called Jesus Christ. And everything that we build will be put to the test. And he said that one day, when we get to heaven, we will see, receive our rewards from everything that we have built. He said many build with gold, others build with silver, but others yet build with straw and clay. But you young people and adults, what are you building your spiritual home with? Christ said, you know what? In my Father's house, there are many, many dwellings. I want to go and what? Prepare a place for you. So there is a destination for us to go. So don't live your life like this is it. Because this is just the beginning. The suffering that we have here as young people, as adults, is nothing compared to the riches, to the blessings, to the love, to being in the presence of our Heavenly Father. Many times as Christians, we are afraid to suffer. We are afraid to say no. We are afraid to admit the fact that, you know, we are sinners and we need Jesus in our lives. As young people, I'm going to be very honest with you right now. Nobody is perfect but Jesus Christ. We have all sinned. We all fall short of the glory of God. And that's why we come to Christ. Don't run from God because there are things in your life that are not according to Him. Run to Him and ask Him to help you fix the issues in your life. The things that are not going well. As an adult, I'm inviting you and saying, you know what? Be honest with yourself because as adults, a lot of times we tend to hide so many things. Let's be honest with ourselves and realize if things in our life are not going well. Let's ask God for forgiveness and ask Him to please start, give us a fresh start in our lives. There are so many promises out there. Jesus says, there's a home that I'm prepared for you. He also said, you know what? In Matthew 6, 6 19, 21, it says, Do not lay up treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy it. Thieves can break in and steal your possessions. But He says what? Send them all ahead of you. Send them to where I'm going, where I will keep them, where nobody can take them, where no rust, no thief, and no moth can come in. My question to you is this. Are you spending your time, young person, or adult, father, mother, are you spending your time building treasures here in heaven? Are you using up your time buying things here and having fun here? And you're not investing any of this time that God has blessed you with to send things ahead? Are we practicing the same things that everybody else does and we don't have time to love, to forgive, to pray, to share the blessings that God has given us? We need to realize that our time here is short. And as Pastor Dave was saying, you know what? Eternity 
It's not just the length of time. But he said what? What did you say, Pastor Dave? I don't see if you remember still. It is the depth of living. It is the depth of living. living. Jesus said he will give us what? Life and what? Abundance. abundance. Now, he said that here. But imagine the abundance of eternity. Eternity is not just the length of time. But it is the depth of living. Of life. The essence. The joy. The grace. The presence of God. My message to you is, you know what? Homes, cars, clothes, money, etc. They're not evil. We need a certain amount of these things to be able to live comfortable. And I know God doesn't want us to, to, to be begging. He wants us to be comfortable. But He doesn't want these things to be the main focus of our lives. Amen. Why don't we consider investing a little more time in laying up treasures in heaven? Let us work, let us pray, let us give, let us love in ways that will result in God giving the glory. Let us live in a manner that will touch the lives of those that need Jesus' love and His salvation. Because you're not the only one, I'm not the only one that is in need of salvation. Because you know what? What can we take to heaven? What can we take to heaven? Nothing. Nothing but the things that you have received from God. And every materialistic material thing you have, you will have to leave behind. The scripture says that if you were raised with Christ, seek those things that are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not, not on the things of this earth. <laughs> to end, I'm going to say this. If you believe in Christ, and if you believe that God is going to take you to where He is, it's time to start packing. It's time to start packing. If you don't believe in God, I'm going to invite you today to seek Him. Because He loves you and He has created you to spend eternity with Him. Now, if you just don't care, and I'm going to be honest, there's nothing that I can do. But if you're serious, about believing in God and loving in God, loving God, and you commit your life to God. I'm not saying if you've never said, I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you believe in God and you believe that He, His Word is true and that He said He will take you and He is waiting for us. One day He's waiting and He's coming back for us. You know what? It's time to get packed. It's time if you, if you fill your suitcases up with material things, it's time to throw that stuff out. And it's time to send the spiritual things ahead. Amen. It's time to leave the lust. What are, what are the things we're here? Jealousy. Jealousy. Pride. What else? Say it loud. Pride. Pride. Greed. Greed. Hatred. All those things are staying where? Here. Those things can be sent. Because those things are against what God wants. But love, patience. What else can be sent ahead? Kindness, Kindness. Kindness. Gentleness. Gentleness. You know what? There are so many things that we can fill our spiritual suitcase with. There are so many things that we can, we, we can use our time to do. But many times we use it for the wrong things. Today is the day that God is saying, no, it's time to start working on your list to take the things you're going to be sending ahead to heaven. The material things are staying here. Only the things that you have gained from me will you be able to take. Man. One day, I want to be with Jesus. One day, I want to be with God. One day, I want to say, Oh, how you love me. Hmm. You love me, and like you said, you love me, you love me, and even though it, I wasn't worth you loving me, you love me. Man. And under your grace, and under your love, I was able to live, and even though it wasn't easy, but you held on to me every second of my life, and your word was true because I found forgiveness in you, Amen. and your blessings and your promises are what brought me here, and I'm going to invite you, young person, and I'm going to invite you, adult, if things are not going right in your life, it's time to get real with God, and it's time to realize that we are bound for eternity, amen. 
And there's things that we have to send ahead of us. Amen. Amen. Amen.